Fahrenheit 100 Plus was CCOA's fine art exhibition designed to raise awareness of climate change. The 35 accomplished local artists, whose names are shown here, came together to create one of the most exquisite fine art shows in recent memory. And in this video, I'll walk through the gallery and show you each work of art. The show was at the Osning Public Library during the month of October 2022, and we want to thank James Trapasso and the entire library staff for their cooperation and support. But let's look around and see some of the amazing works from the show. As we walk through the gallery, look at the installation on the column to your right. This installation is called Words by the noted local artist Tom Smith. Let's start our tour by looking at the three large paintings on our left by the artist Ilsha schreiber Noll. These paintings are part of a series entitled Trees or Sanctuaries. In Ilse's words, My trees are black and charred fragments of nature and express the loss we will experience if we do not protect our forests. The underlying motto for this series can be read in the center painting on which I printed an overlay with excerpts from Langton Hughes' poem, Let America Be America Again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Now let's return to the main gallery and take a look around. Wow, there's so many good pieces of art here. I'll walk through each one of them for you, but I just wanted to show you that this show was in the main gallery and in the extension on the other side of the doorway, and it went down the hallway to the theater. But let's look at one piece at a time because each one of these is, is so amazing. The first one is a photo here by Andrew Courtney of Greta Thunberg at a local climate awareness event. I apologize for the reflection I'm getting off the glass on the front of the photo. I'll angle my camera a little bit to the side to try and keep the reflections out of the lens of the camera. The next work is by Molly Narlock, and it's an acrylic painting on newspaper. Next up, we have Indifference to Extinction by Vinnie Neuheimer. This one is called Circling by Maria Klein. Next, we have a work by Joe Mullins, Heavy Spring Rains, New Mexico One. This is one of two pieces that Joe had in the show, and it's ink on mulberry paper. Next, we have the first of two works by the celebrated artist Rob Shepardson. This one's called Garbage Can, and it's pen, ink, and graphite and acrylic paint. Here's Rob's second work, Pandemic Picnic, which is pen, ink, and graphite. And here's Joe Mullen's second work, Heavy Spring Rain, New Mexico Two, also ink on mulberry paper. Next, we have a very unique and creative book by the artist Karen Viola called Schooling. It's 36 by 18 inches and was created with fused plastic made from food packaging, which is usually discarded and ends up in landfills. She made a fully uh, open accordion book, uh, and the story reads across the white strip through the middle of the work here. Next up, we have the first of two works by the local photographer Rob Dublin. This one's called Stormy Weather and shows the remnants of a big storm at Croton Point Park on the Hudson River. Next, we have the first of two works by local artist Christine Knowlton. This one's called Metal to Water. And in Christine's words, it shows the grief and worry of the metal element transitions as energy contracts. This is a glycy print of a paper collage. And here we have Christine's second work, called Water. In her words, it shows the end of the Zen cycle of nature and life through death and transformation. And here we have the first of two works by Ketty North, this one called The Last Migration. It's encaustic, which is hot wax with oil paint pigment, with charcoal, and it's nine inches 
by 12 inches. Next up, Hierarchy of Decay Number 4 by the local photographer and artist Robert Olson. In Robert's words, consumption of materials and resources and the embedded carbon required in their manufacturing are often under-recognized and overlooked. Here we have Storm by Linda Falcon. She lives in Cornwall, New York, and this painting is based on a photograph taken by her brother while he volunteered at Roper Lake State Park in Safford, Arizona. And here's Rob Dublin's second work, Flood Tide, that shows Sanasqua Park during an unusually high tide in 2004. This photo earned Rob a Best in Show for Best Photograph as awarded by the Croton Council on the Arts. And that brings us to Ketty North's second work called Silence. This one is also encaustic and it's 10 and a half by 22. Here we see the first of four works by noted artist Tom Smith. This one's called Garden and it's acrylic paint, pencil, charcoal, and colored pencil. Moving on, we see Tom's second and third works called Landscape Number no. 4 and Landscape Number no. 5. These are also acrylic paint with pencil, charcoal, and colored pencil. Next up, we have a diptych by Soli Pierce. This work is encaustic and it's titled Ghost Forest. Next, the first of two works by the local ceramic artist Orit Daly. This one titled World on Fire. Moving along, we see a collection of eight magnificent silver pins created by the jewelry artist Jennifer Ruthany. Each one of these pins is one of the species of fish found in the Hudson River. And I'll zoom in here so you can try to get a better look at each one of these. And the last work on this wall is Orit Daly's second piece of ceramic, Forsythia Signs of Spring. Coming around the corner, we see the first of seven works by the very talented local artist Tahar Shafi, who was born in Switzerland but raised in Iran. Coming around to the next wall, we see the first of five photos by the local photographer Danny Oppenheim. All of Danny's prints are of ice in various forms. Danny's second work is called Yin and Yang, and it's a look at that delicate balance we have between ice and plants. Danny's third, fourth, and fifth prints are some of my favorites from his collection, and they're of ice crystals on his bedroom window. It's hard to believe when you first see these that they're actual photos and that nature can have such exquisite symmetry and beauty. Next up, the first of three works by Lael Morgan. This one titled Electric School Bus. It's 36 by 48 and it's oil on canvas, gallery wrapped. Okay, so as we go around the corner now and head to, whoops, let's not run over this young person. Um, as we head down the hallway to the theater, we can see Lael's second and third works. These are large banners that she's used with her climate activist work. Heading back toward the main gallery now, we see three amazing watercolors by the artist Steve Ehrenberg. These are all um, 36 by 28 pictures of insects. The first one is a bee, the second one a dragonfly, and the third one, a cicada. These three works collectively earn Steve a best in show for best fine art as recognized by the Osning Public Library. Back in the main gallery now, we see this very striking photograph by Owen Ackerman. Um, Owen is a sculptor, painter, and photographer. And this photo earned Owen a Best in Show for Best Photograph as awarded by the Osning Public Library. Moving on now, 
we see the first of two works by photographer and documentary filmmaker John Fine. This one called Day for Night. And this is the second of John's photos called When There Was Water. Next up, we have a gorgeous 16 by 20 acrylic on canvas painted by Michael Furuya. This one's called E.E. E. Morning and it's a picture of a native Hawaiian honey creeper on an oi tree. Uh, Michael notes that um, Hawaii contains more than 25% of the species on the nation's endangered species list. And that brings us to a photograph by the one and only Cornelia Cotton, this one called Fern. And I just can't help but noting that Cornelia was one of the founders of the Croton Council on the Arts many years ago. Oh, and here we have two more by Joe Mullins. So these two are titled Sangre, Sangre de Cristo Mountains, Las Vegas, Mount Hermit's Peak Fire, one and two. Both are oil on board and five by seven. And that brings us to three wonderful paintings by the artist Jessica Miller. This is the first show I've been able to see Jessica's work and I'm quite impressed. This one's called Evening on the Marsh, and it shows um, uh, an area in Michigan where there were potash mines uh, in a county called Osceola County. And this is Jessica's second painting of the same subject called Marsh Number 10. And Jessica's third painting of the same subject called Swamp on Poggy Road. That brings us to a striking large canvas. This one's 31 by 41, called Polar Bear, by the young painter Ariel Lindholm. Now let's shift our gaze down to the two large display cases in front of the wall. This first one shows glazed stoneware by Carrie Goldberg. Carrie's a ceramic artist in Croton. Moving over to the second piece, we see several stoneware pieces by the well-known artist Rene Kirchi Ivanov. Looking back up at the wall, we see the first of two photos by the local photographer Linda Austrian, this one called A Shoulder to Lean On. Linda notes that this breed of chestnut horses with flaxen manes is called an Australian halflinger. Moving down to Linda's second print, and unfortunately we're seeing more of me than Linda's print in this picture, but it's of a beautiful evening in the Adirondacks when the Big Dipper was exceptionally clear. This shows a small lake um, at Elk Lake Lodge. Here we have the first of two works by another young artist, Leif Lindholm, this one called Kingfisher. Moving up, we see a picture by photographer Wayne Marcus, entitled Fallen. Moving along, we see the first of two works by local artist Anne-Marie Sasso. Anne-Marie does a lot of work with the youth through her 4-H programs, but she also has her own sawmill, and she turns fallen trees into this amazing one-of-a-kind furniture with handcrafted wrought iron legs. Let's take a closer look. And here's a one-of-a-kind ceramic bowl by the artist we saw before, Rene Kirchi Ivanov. And here is Anne-Marie Sasso's second work called Edge, which is a relief on a tile. Moving along, we see the second work by the young artist Leif Lindholm, this one entitled Chet, the, slum, the Slamadan Skull. <laughs> I always stammer when I say that. Uh, this is a sculpture made of maple wood, uh, hammered and chiseled, and then scorched black with an acetylene torch. It's 20 by 23 with a blue stone base. All right, let's walk over to the other side of the gallery now. And as we approach, we can see six works by the artist Tahar Shafi. 
As you remember, Tahar is the Swiss-born iris who grew up in Iran. Tahar's work makes reference to ancient objects, both prehistoric and historic. And the work that engages him are ancient objects from the Middle East and Asia, the Mediterranean, Africa, and Native America. Quite striking. Behind Tahar's work, we see two large posters that were created by Megan Dyer. These are quite remarkable, and they show events in Edda Tintin Eleonora Ernan Thunberg's life. Um, let me explain how she'd made these. The poster on the left marks notable events in Greta's life, and the distance between the lines corresponds to whether it was a good year when there's an expansive space, or a bad one when there's a reductive or narrow space. Now she's taken that same information from the poster on the left, and from that made the poster on the right, where the distance between those, or, or the width of the events rather, is shown as the width of tree rings. And as we know, trees grow well in good years, so they'll have a, a large, a wide ring. Or uh, during a bad year, they'll grow just a little, so the ring will be narrow. So there's a beautiful correspondence there between nature and years in Greta's life. And last, but certainly not least, it brings me to a display of faux books, if you will. These are book covers that never really existed, but local artist Marcy B. Friedman created these just to illustrate the theme of this show, which is climate change. So just take a look at, at some of these books. You can see both Marcy's talent as an artist and her sense of humor. This work won Marcy a Best in Show for Best Art that exemplified the theme of the show. So that wraps up my brief walkthrough of the Fahrenheit 100 show at the Osnian Library during October of 2022. The 35 artists whose names you see here certainly brought a, um, an amazing collection of art together to make this show uh, everything that it was. On this slide, you see the organizers of the show. That tall guy on the left is me. I'm Jim Christensen, the president of the Croton Council on the Arts who sponsored the show. Next to me is town supervisor of Osney, Dana Levenberg. Okay. Next to her is Eleanor Quay. Now, this was the first show I'd ever done with Eleanor. Uh, she is a genius, a magician, and she made this show happen soup to nuts in something like four weeks. It was remarkable to watch her in action and an honor to work with her. Um, next to her on the right side of the picture is Danny Oppenheim. And it was Danny's foresight that three years ago reserved the space at the library so that we could have a show at all. So thanks to the organizers and to Dana for everything they did to make this show happen. And I'll wrap up this video with just a few pictures that were taken at the reception on Saturday, August 22nd. It was a really fun party, and the attendees got to meet some of these amazing artists and talk to them about their work. We hope to see you at an upcoming exhibition sponsored by the Croton Council on the Arts. Take care.